Hello relatives, welcome to this week's Schlagmate entitled Resurrected in Texas. Several months ago, a healthcare organization canceled a speaking engagement with me. They were concerned that my heart condition might keep me from making the appearance. It was a bit demoralizing, thinking that my public speaking days were over. However, my spirit was resurrected a short time afterwards when I was invited to deliver grand rounds at the emergency medicine department at the University of Texas McGovern Medical School. Last week, I delivered that address. And I have to tell you that in the weeks prior to my presentation, I did indeed have some anxious moments just thinking about it. And on the day, I did get a bit short of breath after I was introduced. I was breathing heavily and sweating, and I held up my hand and said, this sometimes happens to me, just give me a moment. I wiped my brow, I took off my jacket, and recovered in 30 seconds and went on interrupt uninterruptedly. I spoke to about a hundred physicians, faculty, and students about saving the lives of others in your own, and talked about what it means to be healthy and how we sustain ourselves in the current epidemic of physician burnout, talked about vulnerability and growth, the difference between a doctor and a healer, and the importance of being connected to something other than yourself especially in the hard times, it helps us. I always leave time for Q&A before making my closing remarks. And as the universe would have it, the last questioner wanted to know how one encouraged terminally ill patients to come to every day with joy. It was a great segue into my closing remarks. And I said, you saw that I was a bit breathless and diaphoretic when I began, because I have a serious cardiomyopathy, and anything that triggers an adrenaline rush can take my breath away. I've acknowledged my vulnerability and fears to myself, but it's been hard for me to acknowledge them publicly. I still see myself as a mellifluous, golden-throated orator, and have difficulty acknowledging my growing limitations. The ego is a powerful driver, and loss of control has always threatened me. Even though I recognize that thinking I ever had control was always more illusory than real. But here I am talking about living in truth and harmony in your mind, body, and spirit if you're going to stay healthy. So I can hardly hide mine. How do you engage patients who are facing terminal illness? You inspire them. You spend time with them. You tell stories. Put on a clown nose. Talk about what happened over the weekend. Remind them of their aliveness. Patients trust, admire, and respect you. They look forward to seeing you. And they know that you will not abandon them. You may not be able to cure their bodies, but you can heal their spirit. And in so doing, remind yourself that the work you do is holy. I thank them for giving me the opportunity to share my truth. And when I finished, I got a standing ovation. It lifted my spirit. It filled my cup with gratitude and reminded me that I want to keep doing this because it keeps me joyfully engaged in my life while I'm still living it. Someone came up to me afterwards and offered me another job. Count me in.
So that's what I'm thinking this week. Stay engaged, stay connected. Count yourself in, in every moment. I say this for all my relations. Mitakwiasi. Thank <laughs> you.